Well, hello everyone. It's that time. It's time for another episode of Finding America. Well, this week's episode and hunt takes place at an old courthouse that dates back to the 1870s. I had some free time last week, so I was out driving, and I came to a town that I've really never been to before, and as soon as I got into that town, I saw this gorgeous courthouse, big lawn, huge trees, and I was like, man, I would really like to hunt that, so I said, what the heck, I parked the car, um, saw a policeman outside and asked him who I'd ask to get permission. Uh, he wasn't quite sure, but gave me directions to the mayor's office. And uh, once I got there, I told his secretary what I was interested in doing. She asked the mayor, and the mayor said, go for it, have fun. Um, so you didn't have to ask me twice. I was buzzing back to my vehicle. So I got my detecting gear and uh, had a few hours, so I decided, well, let me go ahead and give it a try. So I went out there, and I found some pretty cool things. Then I let Chris know, and I met up with him this past weekend, and we both hunted it. And uh, I have to say, it was a lot of fun. Well, I'm here at the new permission, the 1800s courthouse. Um, been hunting about half an hour. Got a lot of uh, bullet casings from honor guards. A few odd coins, but uh, that's the first decent signal I got so far. Uh, bring up like a 1215, dug down and uh, got this nickel on edge. Looks like it had a encounter with a lawnmower, but uh, let's see if I can get a date. It's a Jefferson. Yeah, it's a uh, 47, so not too bad. Well, first of all, I'm gonna have to apologize for the road noise, but uh, since I'm in a courthouse, I am in the heart of the town, so there's lots of traffic going by, but uh, I'll tell you what, I just got that nickel here, and I had gotten another signal before I started digging that, and I dug this one out, and check it out. I got myself a nice little round ball. And I think that's going to be a pistol ball. And uh, very cool. Looks like it may have been fired. But uh, we are in the heart of a lot of Civil War action. And this courthouse was built during the Reconstruction period. Or not too long afterwards. But yeah, this has been fired. So very cool. We had a Civil War battle that waged right over this ground. So I am thrilled to see this. So... I will take that and uh, hope there's more. Well, I was uh, hunting at the base of this tree. This tree's got to be well over 100 years old. And uh, about five, six inches down, bringing up like a 1243. Look at that. <laughs> I have no idea what this is yet. I saw the shape and I grabbed the camera. Um, it's got some kind of a opening here but I do see some writing or something on it it's very thick uh, I don't know I'm here by myself so I'm gonna shut the camera off I'm gonna brush it off and see what this is but uh you know oh my gosh this will be bizarre you know what I think it is I think it's three dog tags stuck together that is crazy I don't know if you can see it but when I was looking at these numbers, uh, I've dug so many of these dog tags. I think that's what it is. Let me uh, let me get them cleaned up and see if I can get anything off of them. Well, that is exactly what these are. It's three dog tags stuck together. That's crazy. But I'm in a county that I've actually never really been to, and this is the first place I saw when I got into this town. So. I'll show you the year on the tag, but uh, it's 1920, and uh, kind of offset there, but uh, very cool. Three 1920 dog tags stuck together. <laughs> I guess that's a dog tag spill. Well, I got a uh, 1237 just a little bit ago, and I got uh, a bit of melted lead. Could be camp lead. Looks pretty old. Uh, and the next thing I got was here, it was a 1224, right up against this tree. I'm just going around this tree. I've already pulled like seven good targets out of here. Um, 
well I should say seven conductive targets that someone should have dig up, dug up but uh yeah this one uh, no exception actually it's a uh, harmonica reed and uh, just below the uh, bark chip layer in the dirt so very cool I just got another p signal uh, 1213 I was looking for a nickel but I'll tell you what, I found something so cool. Check this out. I don't know if you can make it out. If you look here, that is a flag. That's the American flag hanging down with a shield in the center. And this banner and the what's cut out is says boy. And I'm thinking this may be a very early Boy Scout piece. I'm not sure. I thought I had something Civil War. But boy this thing is <laughs> boy no pun intended there <laughs> but boy this is pretty awesome I'm gonna have to see if I can find this but I, I'm guessing Boy Scouts never seen anything like it very thin I'll get it cleaned up and give you a better look at it ah, such a cool piece right here in the lawn Well, Chris called me over, and, uh... Wow, man. That thing is pretty big. That's huge. Nice compact, huh? Crushed it on that side, but it's complete. Yeah, it does There's have a little some design. coming through. A little bullseye pattern. Yeah. What's on the other side, anything? Yeah. I guess it does. It's got warts. Well, that's oh, cool. Neat. Complete compact. It's sitting right there. It wasn't deep at all. Yeah. Well, we'll get that one cleaned up and uh, give you a better look at that. Nice find. Cool. Chris called me over. What'd you get, man? It looked like another bale seal, but there's nothing on it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it looks crude. Yeah, I see the hole where the wire would have gone through. Yeah. Is it on the other side? No, it looks like it's mm. just solid over there. Yeah, it might be there just full with some dirt, but pretty cool. Uh, must be a little plain bale seal. The floodgates have opened for my bale seals. <laughs> I haven't ever had any, and now in the last few months, it's just been... Well, last couple of weeks, I got two of the Southern Railway. Yeah. And, uh, yep, there you go. And you, you got another one over in the other town we were in. Well, yeah. Chris was on the other side of the courthouse lawn, and uh, he gave me the signal that he got something pretty interesting. And it does look interesting, but there's still what it is. There's profile sticking through. Wow, look at this. But well, that thing must have been banging. Yeah, well. It does kind of look like us. It was St. Bernard with a barrel. That's what I was thinking. Well, let's go ahead and brush it off and see. Uh, wow, maybe look it's, at that. Wow, maybe it's. Oh, you know what? Is that the front of a pocket watch? No? Uh, no, it can't be. Now let's go ahead and brush it off and see what we have. See what it is. It's very cool looking. <clears throat> it is. Is it a St. Bernard? It's a St. Bernard with a. With a cask. What is that? A little barrel under his, uh, around his neck. Okay, that's just bizarre. Oh, how cool is Whoa. that? Whoa. How cool is what that? What is Some that? kind of piece of jewelry or something. Yeah, that's a weird clip on it. Be careful, it might be yeah. thin. I'll be darn. Dude, oh, that's... is that cool? <laughs> it's crazy looking. Let me get a. Man, it almost looks like if that bent over, that'd be like those old uh, spectacles. Yeah. But why? It does look like an eyeglass <laughs> <that's> frame. <laughs> Very weird. All right. Well, keeping with our, we like to find the weird stuff. That is very cool. It definitely looks like a dog with a little, with a little barrel hanging around his neck. Yeah. And uh, we'll get that cleaned up, and I'll give you a better look at it. But uh, yeah, that's that's weird, dude. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Very cool piece. Well, we are in front of the courthouse near the flagpole. And uh, Chris found uh, some evidence of a story I was told last time I was here. That uh, looks like a KKK symbol. It's got uh -huh. the blood, uh, blood drop in the middle and the cross of... With the white knights or something? Yeah, I don't the, know. Uh, yeah, I'm not uh, <laughs> too too up to date on the. Yeah, current. I was told that uh, 
a while back they uh, the clan had a rally in front of this courthouse many years ago and I guess one of them dropped one of their uh, emblems I guess you'd call it yeah, it looks like some kind of a stick fin they were wearing that's a first for me I don't yeah. know how I really feel about it but yeah I know how I feel about it but it's all right nah. it's part of our history and uh, I uh, huh. well it's part of history, so, you know, you don't ignore it. Yeah. You just uh, acknowledge it, and uh, pretty interesting. I don't think I've ever dug anything up from the clan. Mm, not that I know of. All right, man. Well, that is uh, definitely a different find. It's a find. <laughs> so we hunted all morning long in that courthouse lawn. Uh, we found some really cool things, but it wasn't quite producing the way we expected it to. Uh, it may have been hunted in the past. I don't know. But during the course of hunting there, had a guy come out and introduce himself to me and we started talking. Turned out he was one of the supervisors in the county. And uh, while I was showing him what I'd found and telling him about the hobby, uh, he gave me permission to five more old homes in the area that the county owned. And uh, so I was thrilled. And one of them just happened to be across the street from the courthouse we were hunting. And uh, it dated to about 1910, had a super tiny front yard. And that's pretty much it. It was paved all the rest of the way around it. But, let me tell you, that little yard really gave up some great finds. Well, I'm in the front yard of this uh, 1910 house I also got permission for today. And uh, got a 1233-1234. And uh, it's going down pretty good. I was hoping for an Indian, but uh, it's still pretty cool. I got a ring. And uh, it is definitely an old ring. I'm going to see if I can... Uh, if you can see the detail on this thing sort of a a rope pattern or a vine pattern just goes all the way around it I'll get it cleaned up you can get a better look at it but uh, that's a cool find I'd say it was probably six inches down well I got a real very iffy signal and I'll tell you what it was deep it was giving me a nice strong signal, but the numbers were bouncing all over the place, mainly because of the depth. Uh, probably looking at, uh, I buried this lash. I'm probably looking at 10 or 11 inches down. And uh, I finally got it up here. And it looks to be uh, the front half of a padlock. Pretty cool, pretty old one. I believe it says RFD on it. So uh, yeah, pretty neat old find. So I dug up that lock, and you know me, if I see something that I don't know about, I just can't wait to get home and do a little bit of research. So the letters on that lock, RFD, kind of intrigued me. So I uh, did a little bit of research, and it wasn't the manufacturer's logo or anything. It actually stood for Rural Free Delivery. And uh, I had heard of that, but I just hadn't connected it with that lock. Now what is interesting about that, uh, back in the 1800s when it came to mail, a lot of people lived out in the countryside and they'd have to ride into town either to send an item or to receive an item. And it was pretty inconvenient. It could be miles from town. So in 1896, the post office started an experiment called Rural Free Delivery. Now this was to help those people living out in the countryside. And what this entailed was it allowed people to set up a mailbox that the postman would come and pick up mail and deliver to. Now the only requirements was that the mailbox had to be on the road that the postman traveled. Now that presented some problems that people might have been getting orders from Sears and Roebuck back then. Uh, they didn't want it left unattended out by the road. So the postman says, well, we will issue some locks and we have no problem with you locking the mailbox and uh, as long as you give the postman a key. And that really worked out well. And it became pretty much a predecessor for how mail's delivered today. Chris is over here definitely thinking outside the box. Up in my cubby hole. Boy, he's right up against this uh, brick. Looks like an Indian. Oh, wow. Yeah, he got himself an Indian head. Yeah. Boy, that was right up against the brick right there in the sidewalk. Right in there. Wow. Good job. It is crusty. That's going to need some cleaning. I can't even get a date off of it. Yeah, I think that's... 
see. Yeah, well, give you a look at it. You can definitely tell it's an Indian, but uh, gonna have to get it back home and uh, try to get a little work on. Now, if you've been watching the videos lately, you've uh, this is going to kind of blow you away. But I got a 1235 signal. It was a pretty good signal. I dug down, and uh, you'll never believe what I got. I got another Southern Railway lead bale seal. <laughs> SRY. I tell you, we have crisscrossed East Tennessee the last uh, three, four weeks. Last three hunts, I've gotten one of these every time. And this is uh, the early style, the SRY style. And uh, this one's in really good shape. It's got a zero over A. Very cool. Well, I've got another good target. Uh, this was reading a 1539, which is gonna be uh, sort of your zinc uh, weedy range. But uh, had to go pretty far down as usual. Uh, about nine inches. Finally got it out of the hole, and I got a advertising thimble. What I can make out is uh, Tennessee Life and Casualty. It's probably an insurance company from the uh, 30s or 40s, but uh, pretty cool little piece. All right, about this 1910 house. Got it at 1245, and uh, just a couple inches down, and look what I dug up. You see that? It's got a swastika on it. it. Must be a good luck token, but it's about the size of a half dollar. It's holed at the top. And, uh, wow. I'm going to get this cleaned up, but it's a, it is a big, awesome looking token. So, figure out what it is. I'll be right back. I'm going to brush it off. Well, this thing turned out to be a really cool piece. It's about the size of a half dollar, but, uh, it's hold at the top and it has the swastika in the center, which, of course, back in the early 1900s, that was a symbol of good luck. And uh, around the edge, it says the membership emblem of the Boy Scouts Club. And on the bottom down there, it says good luck. And I think it has like a horseshoe here. I'll have to clean it up some. The other side is even cooler. It says Boy Scouts on the top. And it has a Boy Scout sitting on top of a horse. It's just awesome. And uh, I'll get it cleaned up and uh, we'll get a better picture of it for you. But uh, I'm guessing this is probably 1910, 1920. Uh, just a killer piece. Really glad to have found this. A lot of people don't realize that before World War II, the swastika was a widely used symbol. Um, the original meaning of the word swastika actually means good fortune or well-being. And the earliest use of the swastika goes all the way back 7,000 years. The swastika was thought to represent the movement of the sun through the sky back then. Now the swastika was also a very sacred symbol and it was used all over the world including India, China, Africa, Europe and uh, even by our own Native Americans. Now, during the 1800s and 1900s, it had a resurgence in popularity. Uh, there was a discovery made by a German archaeologist in the uh, city of Troy, actually. He found some pottery that had the swastika on it, and uh, he believed it had very deep meaning, religious meanings to that society. So there was a bit of a resurgence in the popularity of that symbol, and uh, for many years it was used as a symbol of wishing people good luck. Now, of course, famously, Hitler adopted that symbol as a symbol of his political party in 1920. And once people learned the ambitions of Adolf Hitler, the use of the swastika as a good luck symbol was quickly abandoned. Well, I got this signal. It was a 1219, and in E-Track language, pull tab. But I dig it all. I don't care. I take the pull tabs and put them away, and I'm really glad I did. Chris walked up just as I was like, oh my gosh. Look at that thing. <laughs> it's really cool. It just popped out of this uh, dirt clod. Oh yeah, look at that. Check out that little skeleton key, and it's got a really nice design. It's complete, huh? Oh yeah, it's all there. Look at that. Oh, cool. Man, that's an early one. It's been a minute. Oh my. I like it. 
Now this is why I dig it all. Yeah, you'll dig your share of pull tabs, but look at the cool things you find. I tell you, it's just a that's just a great looking key. That's definitely 1800s. Yeah. Might even be Civil War period. I know. Wow. I know the uh, courthouse here was built in the 1870s, so very, very cool piece. I love digging skeleton keys. I'm still working this yard right up against the sidewalk along the street. It was way down there. It took me a while to find it. This sucker was elusive, but I ended up getting a little hard earring. Uh, I would doubt it's gold, but uh, it looks to be plated, but pretty cool little find. Took me a while to find it. I'll tell you what, guys. I think I love this yard. <laughs> it's just a, such a small little yard. But man, it's just, I'm just digging everything. This signal, very, very choppy. I mean, it, it just barely gave me a decent signal. But I dug it, and I am so glad I did. I don't know if you, can you see that? That is like a little tiny toy gun. That's oh, just incredible. Oh, this thing is so cool. I thought for a minute it was one of those that uh, had a bulb on the end, but it isn't. It's just a, a very cool little toy gun. Look at that. That is so cool. I don't know how many times I can say cool on this one, but <laughs> wow. Yep, dig it all. I mean, I, I got two pull tabs on the way to this one along the sidewalk, and uh, the next one is this. And the last one was a really cool skeleton key. So that is way cool. I am very glad I dug that. Well, I got a... Uh... 1645 but it was like right up against the sidewalk and I was thinking maybe it's rebar but I swung the coil over this part of the sidewalk and didn't get any signals so I went ahead and pulled the dirt out and uh, yeah let me pull this so you can see it but there's the silver dime right there and I'm gonna pull it out of this little clot of dirt and we got mercury cool. oh that's awesome that makes you feel good when you pull something right up against the sidewalk. It looks like it's 20s. And, uh, yep. Sweet. Looks like, uh, 1925. That's what it looks like. So, very happy with that. Been a lot of holes today before we got a silver. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that really was an amazing day, and it was a very memorable hunt. Uh, it just goes to show you, you never know what's going to come out of that next hole. We had finds that symbolized good luck, love, and unfortunately, even hate. But it just goes to show you, as I always say, history makes a find a treasure. And I really hope we see you next week on Finding America.